Hello people, welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about the Elisha Glowortica, the solar powered sea slug that is capable of using photosynthesis to survive. So the Elisha Glowortica, it's a pretty simple creature, it's a sea slug. You can find it in Canada, Florida and the Massachusetts of the USA. It feeds mostly on plankton like a lot of sea slicks do, but unlike others, this one is capable of using chloroplasts to survive. So what are chloroplasts? Chloroplasts are basically those tiny green dots that you see in those plant cells here right here, like this one. And if you look up close, good look closer to some such a chloroplast, it would kind of look like this. And those chloroplasts are capable of doing photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process where solar energy gets converted into glucose and oxygen. Um, the basic ingredients the, the chloroplasts need for this is carbon dioxide, which is in the air, and water. Since plankton lives in the water, it's also there, and otherwise you can also get it out of the air. But how is this sea slug actually capable of using chloroplasts? That is actually pretty difficult to say, because, but its digestive tract is capable of removing chloroplasts from the plankton. And those chloroplasts then get absorbed by the sea slug, which is able to use them to produce solar energy and thus survive. If an adult of the slugs, if the Elisha chlorotica eat enough plankton, it's capable to survive the rest of his life without eating. Which is quite a remarkable trait, because there are no other known animals capable of using chloroplasts in such a way or receiving them in such a way. However, it to support chloroplasts, you also need a specific set of genes. So naturally, those genes are already in the slug, but in its offspring, the gene is not there yet. So with a special technique called horizontal gene transfer, the slug is able to create a copy of the genes to support chloroplasts and use them, and then transfer them to their offspring which is a remarkable effect because usually well remarkable effect that's not right a remarkable trait it's a remarkable behavior because usually things like that only happen in laboratories they never saw it applied in nature but now it has been so it copies the, his genes it's them to their offspring so to speak and they are also able to support chloroplasts and use them and live a solar energy that way. However, if the horizontal gene transfer has been activated, all the adult slugs are wiped out by a genetic virus. That virus is inside their own DNA and is capable of wiping out all the adults and it does so after the horizontal gene transfer, which means that on a yearly basis, because they roughly get a year old, the whole the whole cycle starts over again. So you have young sea slugs that eat those pla that eat plankton, they get the chloroplast from the plankton, they get all that they made, they get offspring, they transfer the gene to their offspring. And then a genetic virus gets activated and it kills the adult slugs. So that's a very, yes, short cycle. On the one hand, it's nice to see that the population this way keeps small, but on the other hand, it doesn't help the population to move further, so to speak. And it's actually the only species capable of applying horizontal gene transfer and using chloroplasts 
There is no other animal known, to my knowledge, that is capable of living purely on photosynthesis, because that's more a thing for plants, and that makes this sea slug very remarkable. It's both a plant and an animal. So yes, uh, that's it basically. The resources to this will be down below. Uh, consider, consider subscribing if you didn't do so yet. And thank you for watching. Leave a like if you like this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or want to know anything. I will try do my best to answer. And feel free to check out the sources which will be pasted down below in the description. Once more, thank you for watching.